Hello everyone and welcome to this new Substance Painter tutorial. Today we are going for, to focus on a new feature introduced in uh, Substance Painter 2017.1 which is the Brush Maker. So first of all you can find the Brush Maker just here in, um, in the alpha section of the shelf. And uh, this is actually um, a generator uh, that allows you to create alphas for, uh, for your brushes. So how does it work? Uh, first of all, you see that I have created a, a layer, a painted layer, so I can play like that if I want. And I'm just going to click on this to make it appear here, or I can also drag and drop it here like that. And by default, you see that you have this shape, which is like a regular shape. But what is interesting is that below the alpha, you see that now you have a bunch of parameters which has appeared. Uh, and we are going to make um, a round of this just to see what it does exactly. So first of all, as this is um, procedural, you have first a randomized parameter which allows you to, to change the shape at your will. So I just click on random and you have different one based of the same recipe. And then uh, you have a custom shape, uh, which is off by default, uh, which is actually the base shape of each dot, each uh, strand that you see here. So by default, you can choose between this list of shapes, uh, which is the default uh, Substance Designer 1. Uh, for example, you have this one, but if I go, I can go to the, maybe the gradation, let's see, and you see that you have something different. Uh, I can go there, let's see the wave maybe. So you got the point. Uh, you can choose, I think there is like 12 or some, something like that. I didn't count it actually, but you have all these one which are available by default. But maybe you want something really specific. And for that, you can use your own shape, which means an, another alpha. So for example, I just activate this. So by default, it's just a plain white, but right now, if you go down the parameters, you see that here you have an image input. And if I choose here, I can take this one, for example, and you see that it takes this as the, the default um, shape for, for the strand. So this is the first uh, kind of setting you can do. Uh, I'm going to put something more regular for now, maybe. Let's see that. Um, let's take a noise like this one. Okay, give me some variations. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm going to check if the... Okay, nothing. I, I, I'm working with the Wacom right now, so I'm just checking that I removed uh, the, uh, the pen pressure because I want you to, to see correctly. I'm going also to maybe... Let me check that. Okay, and I'm going to change also if I can. Okay. Should, you should see better that way. Okay, so right now let's see all the parameters. So just below, um, you have, uh, it's actually divided in two parts. First, you have the parameters for the strength, uh, the shape of each of these points, and then you have the parameters for the brush itself, so the shape, etc., etc. So, for example, I'm just going to change the alpha so you see something which is more visible. So let's remove everything. Let's take this maybe. Yeah, that's cool. So first thing first, let's see the strands at the top. So you see, you can see that first you can squeeze the shape of each strands like that. So if I do that, no, right now it's like flattened. So you have a general parameter here, and you can also decide to squeeze depending of the width like that to make it wider or and you have on the horizontal and vertical directions so I, so you can make something like this for example if it's what you want so playing with that is one point uh, then you can uh, change the size as well and make it random so by default it's random randomized so it means that each size it's uh, is quite just making it smaller. Um, random, you have different sizes. You can make it with no random, which means that each strand will have exactly the same size. But personally, I prefer like this. Uh, you can, if I make it like that, for example, you can decide to rotate. I don't know, maybe it's too thin for YouTube. 
We've seen that you can rotate the patterns once again the strands and make something like this for example you can choose to make it run to randomize the rotation so either completely which would give something like that or uh, you can so i'm just going to compare something like that for example or you can make it a little bit like that so for example like this which could be cool for example if you want to make fur or hair it could be a nice option uh, let's continue. Uh, you can define the hardness of the pattern. I don't know if you would see it. Maybe there is like that. So will it be hard or, or not? It's in this one you can really see, you can't really see it, but it's possible. So you can define the opacity. Of course, if you put to zero, you won't see anything, which is not a good idea. Or put it to one, so you see that the pattern is completely um, visible in that one. Um, then uh, you can also randomize um, the opacity if I'm not wrong, yeah, just like that. So if you do that, you see that as it, as you have guessed, the it will randomize the the opacity of each strand, each strand in your in your brush. So I'm going to remove it for now. Maybe I'm going to put something a bit less fancy here. You know what? I'm going to say use custom shape off and I'm going to put the power below it. So it's less fancy, but at least we can see the effect of each uh, settings better. So now that you have done that, you can also play with the mask of, of your shape. So you know what? Just for a few seconds, I'm going to put something like the, the cell 2, for example, and I leave it here. Okay, uh, so what is the mask actually? It's uh, it defines how uh, because actually the the all the strands are little squares with an alpha, and it's actually controlled by this one. So if I remove the mask, for example, you see that right now, uh, that's maybe not what you want. So by default, it's activated when you it's uh, the pattern mask. So generally, you want it like that, and you can also define if you want it organic or not. So I don't know if you will see the difference, but actually when it's on, it actually really takes the, um, the height information of, of, the, of the, the alpha, the, the difference, the brightness information to, to affect the border. So it's generally more organic, as you may have guessed. And then you can define the, the size of the mask. So, so if you don't, once again, be cautious with this one, because if you go too high, it will make something really um, maybe too big sometime, but that may be something you want to do. And there is another one here, which is the, the contrast of the mask. Here yeah, it's not really relevant, but yes, you see it a bit. So the less you put it, the more blurry it will be, let's say. So personally, in 90% of the case, I leave these two parameters activated. So this first part was the, um, the strands, all the little dots uh, settings. Now uh, you also have control on the general shape of, uh, of your brush. So by doing that, I'm going to brush setting this here. Uh, first, you can define the number of bristles. So you can put a lot or just a few. So for example, you can do, say I want something like that. Or you can say, no, I want a lot, like I want 200, something like that. By default, um, the maximum right now is 200. We may want to put more uh, if it's necessary. Um, but so far, you can already do a lot with this, especially here where the size is really small. So you can play with that as well. So then uh, you can uh, define the horizontal spread. Um, by default, what do we mean by that? It means it's the way Actually, I would just move on the horizontal and you will understand. You see that it actually, when I diminish this value, what it do, does, it compress all the dots in the middle. Um, if I make it higher, if you see that it, it, it spread it on, the, on uh, the horizontal axis. And of course, the, you have the vertical one, which does exactly the same on, on the other other angle. So it may give something that interesting in some cases. 
So if I do, let's say, have something like that. Um, um, then you have a brush rotation, which is quite interesting because it rotates the brush. Um, actually, is it this one that I want to show? Yeah. So it's not very interesting. I may change that and make it this way. Because right now, if I rotate, you will see that the brush is rotating, but the strands remains in the same direction. So it gives you, if you play with this plus uh, the rotation here, uh, this one, sorry, not this one, you can really play a lot and get some interesting effect as well. Uh, you can define the brush roundness. It, so once again, it will squeeze the brush completely on one axis like that. And you can define the hardness. So actually it's uh, the the lower the more blurry it will be like that finally you also have a mask for the full brush uh, so once again be careful with this by default it's mask uh, this way um, i'm going to diminish the size so we can see it a bit Okay, so right now we have to be really cautious because that was, if I remove the mask, I'm going to change the, the horizontal spread here and here. So here it's maybe fine because it's not that big. I'm going to make bigger, uh, bigger shapes here. Okay, here. You see better. I change the opacity of the brush. Okay, so I have something like that. And you see here that I have a problem because as I deactivate the mask, here it's activated. If I deactivate uh, the first, the mask brush, uh, you see that uh, uh, it, has, it does something, but there is still a fade that go, comes from uh, the center, which is uh, completely opaque to the borders which are transparent, but if I remove that, oops, sorry, yeah, if I remove, you see that now you have a problem. So generally you want at least one of these two to be activated. Um, and finally, uh, you can um, play also with this to change the radius. And what is interesting with the radius is if you look at the, the preview here, you see that it's not just fading the value, it's, it makes uh, the strands disappear. So you can really have something really special in the middle if you want, like that. And you have the hardness, once again, uh, depends, it will be with the fade, uh, which will change uh, the contrast uh, of the, the borders. Once again, be careful with this, Make, you don't want to cut it too much. And that's mostly it. So with these settings, you can really play and give some crazy uh, values. Uh, for example, uh, if I make change the size in one way and diminish in the other one, uh, you can, it's really up to you. There is millions of combination. Um, the idea is really to give you some controls to create your own uh, your own branch. Um, then you can also play again with this. For example, and change. Uh, a bit, made a bit of angle in the jitter. I changed the spacing to something more like that. And for example, you can imagine making some, uh, maybe it's too regular now, so I can change the position a bit. And uh, let's ch change the size as well. Up, um, let me check that. Uh, okay like that, and if I paint right now, you see that it could look like fur, fur or something like that. Let's say I, I am happy with this. Uh, don't uh, forget that you can save a brush preset. Um, so if I do right click on the properties, you see that you, have the, you can create the tool preset, which will save uh, both your material and your brush. Then you have the material preset to save uh, the material setting that you have here, or the brush preset. In our case, that's what we want to do. And when I do that, uh, you see that it has created a new brush preset here. Uh, if you do right click on it, you can rename it properly. So I can say 
Vincent for preset like this one. And now if I type Vincent, okay, it's here. So if I choose another brush, for example, this one, I can paint, and then I go back to to mine here, and you have it. So that's a, a cool trick because it's, it's really great to use the, the brush maker, but if you don't save the, the result, you will have to redo it each time, which is uh, stupid. So don't forget that right click and uh, create brush preset to save the, the brush that you like. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope it has been useful. If you have any comments, any feedback about this feature, don't hesitate to put them in uh, the, the comments of the video. And thanks for watching and see you in uh, the next tutorial.